So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Roman Theory. It's that part of the season when we are starting to gather information on players which we want to buy this summer. Um, it's that time of the year where you'll see a lot of names being linked with any club, to be honest with you. Uh, and obviously speaking, being a Roma fan channel, over these past few days, you've probably seen a lot of different players linked with Roma. You know, starting from Retegi, moving on to Nyonto, moving on to Ndika and uh, Grimaldo, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, passing through Firmino and Benzema, which obviously are not going to happen. But you've read a lot and um, I think it's, it's natural. I think it's normal. Um, it's that part of the season where you know... And you've basically seen how the majority of the season went. Um, therefore, you have a good understanding of the little sections which you have to improve. Um, and approaching the summer window, it's that it's that part of the year where Thiago Pinto, our general manager, general director, I should say, is um, is starting to uh, gather information. And I think it's it's good to do so. Uh, first comment, which I'll say, because today's stream is about uh, Andika and Grimaldo. Both these two names, may I say, initially, first comment which I'll say, is that both of these two names are really good names. If we were to get both of them, I think we're in with a very good treat. Because these are two names which I would absolutely love at Roma. Um, but yeah, where do we start? First of all, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're ready for today. Uh, and if you have any questions about these links, if you have any uh, opinions, obviously feel free to let me know in the live chat. We'll read comments at the end. First thing which I'll do uh, is I'll focus on Andika first, then we'll move on to Grimaldo. I'll read you um, a little um, article. Uh, which actually came out in El Mundo Deportivo, which is a Spanish, um, a Spanish newspaper. So uh, it's about Andika and uh, Andika linked with Roma. And I'll read you this to start off. The name of Andika emerges already linked with Roma last autumn. According to reports from Mundo Deportivo, Mourinho would have asked the club for the Eintracht Frankfurt centre-back on whom other top European clubs such as PSG, Barcelona, Liverpool and Italians such as Juventus, Milan and Inter have also had their eyes for some time. The French player has a contract expiring in June 2023, which he will hardly renew. He could therefore leave on a free transfer next summer. Roma would have Mourinho's charisma on his side, which could convince him to reach the capital city of Italy. But everything depends on the... much of it depends on the Portuguese coach's permanence on the Giallo Rossi bench. Uh, and I think it's... Um, it gives you... it gives you a... Um, a good understanding of the situation around Ndika. It gives you a good understanding of why Roma are interested in Ndika. It gives you a good understanding of the race we have to try and compete with if we want to sign Ndika. Uh, and it also makes you understand who particularly wants Ndika. Uh, good article. Uh, Mundo Deport. And uh, also, may I add another thing which I read online? Um, this this article, which I read to you, came out this morning. This afternoon, apparently, there have been confirms, confirmations from El Mundo Deportivo that Roma are in contacts with Eintracht Frankfurt and Indica's agents. So that's something which I'll add, which this article doesn't mention, because it's something uh, which has evolved over today, over the course of today. Um, I mean, look, we've been linked with him already. Um, there, there's not much that we can say. You know, this is definitely a player. Um, this is definitely a player which which Mourinho wants because we've been linked with him this this summer too. I remember talking about them this summer. We've been linked with him in the January window. We've been linked with him since quite a long while, and especially we've been linked with him since Mourinho became a manager. I think that truly shows to you that this is a player which the manager would absolutely love, um, and. And yeah, I mean, Jose wants Ndika. I want Ndika because I think Ndika would be a massive, a massive hit for our defence. I think speaking about Ndika, I do want to touch on something. One thing which I read is that Roma are planning to gather 50 million euros from the selling of players this summer. So one of Roma's objective this summer is to monetize. And apparently they've set this objective that they want 50 million euros from the players they sell. 
So 50 million euros, not counting merchandise, not counting tickets sold, not counting TV rights. They want a bold 50 million euros just on the selling of players. I think it's a big challenge because one thing which I think Roma has decreased on, something which Roma was better a few years ago, was actually valuing players. I remember a few years ago, and this was under Sabatini. Sabatini was a masterclass at this. Um, Sabatini was really good at profits. You get a player, you resell that player for a lot of, a lot of money. And that's something which Roma lack right now. Because of, the, because of Thiago Pinto's stupidity in buying certain players for certain price tags, it's very hard for the club to make profit from those, from those purchases. You look at Shimrodov, you look at Vina, um, you look at, you look, personally, you, look, you even look at Chilik. It's going to be hard to make the amount of money you got for Chilik. So, personally, that's something which the club has to get back doing. Because if you don't do that, then you are even in a more desperate case where each summer you have to sacrifice big names. And if Roma's objective, one of Roma's objective this summer is to get 50 million euros from the selling of players, frankly speaking, it means we have to sacrifice one slash two big players. And these players, I think I already confirmed, if we have to sacrifice players, the player's already there. It's Tammy Abraham and Roger Ibanez. And I think selling these two players definitely gives you even more than 50 million euros, if you ask me. But obviously, it's... It's, 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 it's wrong because you, you're probably going, well, I mean, if we buy players and then sell players, how do we overall have an increase in the team? Um, and that, that, that is a good point. You know, it's been the problem at this club for many years. You know, let's, let's not forget that Roma had in their teams... In their team, like if you look at Roma's best all-time team of the players they sold, you had you add nine Galan to that list, you add Mo Salah to that list, you add um, Rudiger to that list, you add Paredes from that li to that list, um, you add players like Jekyll to that list. You know Roma have got one of the best teams if it wasn't for us sacrificing them. But that's kind of who we are because of the fact that we don't have massive monetary power. We're forced to sacrifice big players in the summer. Not all of them, but some of them. And I think if, we, if the club has said that they want to make 50 million euros this summer from just the selling of players, you gotta, you got to sell... I mean, unless you sell one player for a lot of money, which I highly doubt on, then... I, I think we have to sacrifice them. Um, so yeah, and that's something which I wanted to add because it, it kind of makes you understand a potential reason of why we need another centre-back. I mean, we need another centre-back regarding of anyone leaving, Ibanez leaving. I think uh, if we have a defence with Smalling, which he's still, he's still trying to renew that contract. Um, so let's say Smalling renews. So you've got Smalling, Mancini, Ibanez, and Ndika. And maybe you monetize from the money of someone like Kumbula, which you sell. You know, that's already a big step up because you replaced a player like Kumbula with a player like Ndika, which is a starting player, which is a player who won Europa League last season, which is a player who's got European experience, who's got a lot of competition around him. So I, I, I think it's, it's a great hit. Plus, you know, Roma always wanted a left-footed centre-back. He's a left-footed centre-back. He's high, set pieces is our biggest danger. Um, so, so yeah, that's, 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 that's what I'll say. And I think speaking about, I mean, closing the bracket of selling players, I think, I mean, actually, let's, let's focus on it when we talk about Grimaldo because it makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Another thing which this article makes you understand is a big target, a big, I mean, a big strategy of, of Roma this summer, which I know a lot of people will hate it. I don't necessarily hate it, but I don't necessarily love it. Free agents. We're going to see free agents get, get bought this summer, not just free agents. 
said this many times, we are going to spend money. But I think Roma's biggest, Thiago Pinto's biggest priority this summer is going, is trying to find good free agents. And I think Ndika is a good free agent because we've bought bad free agents over the past years. But buying Ndika as a free agent and buying Grimaldo as a free agent too, I think as much as yes, you do need to invest money to, you know, to, um, to build a team, fully agree on that. But if you get these kind of players and pay zero money, I do think it's a big shout. Because, you know, Grimaldo and Ndika, I've said that at the start, there are two players which have love wear on the jersey. I think they, they massively increase, increase the, um, the talent of the team. So yeah, that's all about Andika. Uh, I won't spend too much time on. Moving on, Grimaldo, which could be said is even more pres presti prestigious um, than Andika. He's a wing back. Now, good thing with Grimaldo is that he's a left wing back. But he can also play as a right wing back. And right now we have four wing, back wing backs. You have Spinazzola and Zalewski on one side. And you've got uh, Korsdop and Chilik on the other side. Out of these four wing backs, I would sign on a piece of paper being 100, maybe not 100, I would sign on a piece of paper being 90% confident that both our two right full backs will be sold this summer. I think both Korsdop and Chilik will be sold this summer, meaning that you've got a you know, big gap to replace because you're not selling one, you're selling two. So you gotta buy two, two wing backs. And I think Grimaldo, is a, he, he's born as a left wing back, but he has experience in playing in the right wing back, something which Zalewski has to learn. Because I think Zalewski is a very versatile player. Something which I want to see more of next year is this. This is a tactical change, which I do. Let's say we buy Grimaldo, which again, isn't confirmed. It's a rumor. Let's say we buy Grimaldo. And... We've got Spina, who's playing well. So we've got Spina, Zola, Grimaldo. And then let's say we buy another wing back. I think the second you've got three solid wing, wing backs at the start, something which right now we don't have. Because right now, I think we only have two good wing backs. It, that two kind of also turns into a one because Zalewski is very hit or miss. Right now... Playing well, performing well, we only have one left, one wing back, and his name is Spinazzola. Zalewski's been poor lately, Chilik has not been playing lately, and Korsdop, we all know what happened with Korsdop. So he's never going to be the same. And plus, he just got surgery. Two types of surgery. One on his eye and one on his, well, sorry, one on his nose and one on his knee. So Korsdop's never going to be the same. Uh, he, he's spent more time on a, on a surgical bed than actually playing football in these past years. But... Let's say we have three solid fullbacks under the names of Spinazzola, Grimaldo, and X player, someone else that we buy. I think something which the team will massively benefit on is exploiting Zalewski's versatility. Zalewski is probably the most versatile player in our team. Zalewski is probably the player in our team which can play in more, in, in more different positions, in various different positions. Let's not forget that Zalewski is not a fullback. Zalewski has been turned into a fullback. Therefore, what I want to see if we build solid wingbacks is bringing Zalewski away from the defensive section and popping him on the wing. Because I think that's where we get all of that pop from Zalewski as a player. He's fast. He's fast with the ball. If he improves the crossing, you have a player similar to Spinazzola who doesn't have to focus on the defense. How good would that be? So something which I want to see Mourinho do next season is change the position of Zaleski because he's the most versatile player on our team. I've said this already. And I know Mourinho doesn't love playing with wing back, uh, with wingers. I fully acknowledge this. This is something which I said uh, in a past stream too. Mourinho doesn't like playing with wing backs. Which, uh, sorry, with wingers, which is the reason why we sold Clybert. But we got to change some tactical things because, realistically speaking, right? We cannot win the league if we play like this. We just can't. 
So there, there are going to be, there, there are going to be needed some tactical changes. Because even if we were to try and fight for the league next season, which, I, I, you know, much of 80% of this statement coming to reality is based on our transfer market. But let's say that after the summer, tra uh, uh, let's say, I'm not saying it will happen again. Let's say, let's hypothetically imagine that we have a successful transfer market and that we're, we want to fight for the league. Let's, let's hypothetically say that happens. Then I think it's impossible to see Roma win the league playing like this. Like, you, you can't win the league playing like this. Look at Napoli. You know, Napoli are, are going to win the league because they play good football. So, I'm not saying that the style of football has to change, but some tactical changes have to be made. And I think one of them could be Zalewski bringing him on, on the attack and maybe changing the, the formation, playing with wingers, moving back with a, with a four at the back. I don't know. That's something which I'm not here to do. That's something which the coach has to do. Uh, but yeah, let's focus on ending this season. Uh, there's no point on us focusing on starting a new season when we're still in plenty of in, in the middle of, of another one. Um, but yeah, I mean, Grimaldo, apparently, th there are some rumours, not sure if it's false or true, uh, Thiago Pinto will have some crucial meetings with some Benfica and Grimaldo's agents next week. Uh, I think Grimaldo is someone with some incredible statistics. He's got like 24 goals and 75 assists, uh, something like that in his journey with Benfica. He's won a lot of trophies with Benfica. Benfica are a player which, are a team which grow a lot of players. Uh, and he's another free agent this summer. Um, there's a pattern going on. You can you can clearly see this. Um, and I think, yeah. Again, much of these players will depend on Champions League. But but th that's kind of something which is in, is just implied. It's self implied. If we get Champions League football, then a lot of these players will come, regarding of them being free agents or not. I just think Champions League football is so important. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I, I don't know if we'll reach Champions. I think much of it will depend on on the Juventus penalization thing because I hate to break it, ladies and gentlemen. I have a little fear that they'll give the points back. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this when you look at something which happened today. Now, apparently, um, technically, today was supposed to be the day where. Um, the association, the I don't even know what it's called, kind of the legal association prepared a response to um, Juventus's appeal to the 15-point deduction. It, it was supposed to be today, but apparently they've postponed it to the 10th of May. Now, that to me means one thing. It means that this legal association wants to, wants to wait to, to actually see if the 15 point, the giving back the 15 points is necessary. Th that's just my theory on it. It's not confirmed, but if you think about it, right? It was supposed to be today. Why was it postponed to the 10th of May? 10th of May is like a few weeks before the season ends. My theory is that they want to wait and see if they actually is necessary to give the 15 points back. Or maybe Juventus can actually get top four without those 15 points back. And I have a little fear they'll give the points back. If, look, I'm 80% convinced that they're going to give some sorts of point back. So being 15 points or not being 15 points, I think is another thing. But I, as a matter of fact, I am almost convinced that Juventus will get a minimum of five points back. And that changes the season. You know, imagine how bad it would be. Imagine how salty we would be if the season ends... We get top four, and then Juventus gets the points back, and so they get top four, and we don't. That would be just just, just a, a disgrace. You know, I, they, if they cheated, they had to. They have to get punished. And look, I've I've had plenty of Juventus fans message me on Instagram after they watched the Roma Juventus stadium vlog when at the start of that video I said Juventus equals corruption yes Juventus equals corruption because if you cheat you get punished you have to be punished so it's not like I don't like Juventus I'm gonna I'm gonna call them corrupted because that they won the league too many times no it's the reality if you cheat if you commit illegal actions you have to be punished and I just think 
if they were by any chance to give the 15 points back, I think it would be a disgrace for the Italian football. Because imagine how 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 embarrassing it would be for the association to remove the 15 points to Juventus and then actually go, hang on a minute. I'll actually no, I'm gonna give the 15 points back. You haven't done your job. So just get away. Sack them all. Imagine how embarrassing that would be. So I I think much of a Champions League quali- qualify thing depends on, on, on Juventus if they get the points back. Which don't get me wrong, Juventus deserves top four more than us, one hundred percent. But when you cheat, speaking about football, speaking about love, speaking about real life, you you get punished. So as much as Juventus may be second in the league without that fifteen point deduction, football's not just made of 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 what you um uh, of what you play. You know, football isn't just eleven players playing against eleven players. Football has football is our industry. Football is paperwork, money, and that also has to be respected. And I'll be honest with you. If look, no, I'll be very honest with you here. If they get the fifteen points back, you know what? I'd go this to financial fair play. We have to break financial fair play. As a ma- as a sense of revenge, if Juventus get the fifteen points back, you know what Roma has to do? They have to do that to financial fair play. Fuck you! I'm gonna spend as much money as I want, because there has to be balances. Okay, are Juventus allowed to cheat? Then we're all allowed to cheat too. Again, I'm not saying they're gonna get the fifteen points back, but they could get the fifteen points back. And if they do give the fifteen points back, the season changes. Um, the Rome Derby was sent to watch. Roma were uh, penciled in a 0 0 draw. The only way we're going to have a decent transfer window is if Chelsea exercises a buyback clause on Tammy. Good statement. It's confirmed he wants to leave. Uh, no, we're not Ronaldo rumors anymore. I- I'm a big Ronaldo fan, but, you know, Ronaldo, we don't need Ronaldo right now. <laughs> Quadrado's back in the transfer rumors. Uh, who would Ndika replace in the starting lineup? Smalling, no. Mancho, doubt. Ibanez, only for Derby's. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it, uh, we sell Ibanez. And even if we do, I think if we get someone like Indica, we'd, we'd go back to uh, four defense, four man defense, I meant. Um, dude, bring Messi and Ronaldo to the team at the age 24 25 won't even help because the atmosphere in Rome is not good. The atmosphere in Rome is not good. What the hell did you just say? And Mourinho's not anymore in his good position like he used to be. I don't know what you're going on about. Bring Messi and Ronaldo to the team. Are you high, my friend? Clavert, Perez, Reynolds, uh, easy, 30. Don't we still own Shimrod of two? Chalik, Kambula, I don't think we need to sacrifice a big player. We might, but yeah, that's fair. But, you know, we do need to then monetize a lot from those players. And I think it's hard because those players are, apart from Clavert, maybe, those players are shit. So I still think the weakest position in our squad is the right wing back. Uh, we need a proper fullback or a wing back on the right side. I think Chilik will be loaned out. Thoughts on keeping Van Aldem? Uh, I think we have to see at the end of the season. I mean, right now, I'd rather get a better one. Like, if, if someone points a gun at me and says, you got to choose between Van Aldem and Fratesi, then I'd go Fratesi right now. Because Genie's not the same. But, again, I think we we got to give uh, Genie time. Um... Have you seen the Benzema and Morata rumors? I've seen Benzema rumors. I have not seen Morata rumors. Sarah's a joke. The way Pellegrini plays, no striker is safe. Sarah, yes. Uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to catch you tomorrow. If uh, you haven't already, uh, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, catch you soon. Take care and uh, enjoy these last few days of international break. Italy's not playing again, right? No, Italy's not playing again. So yeah, Italy's done. Rutegi is done. Rutegi is done with his business. Catch you soon. Take care.